Thanks for having me. My name is Jeff Irvin. I work for Sustainable CUNY of the City University of New York. Now, uh, some of you may wonder what uh, CUNY does in the realm of solar. Um, so we actually work both on campus sustainability uh, as part of a program called CUNY Conserves, as well as uh, sustainability for the broader New York City and New York State community. And so that's where I work uh, as part of our sustainable energy program. And CUNY was actually uh, part of getting New York City named one of the original Solar America cities, along with the Mayor's Office of Sustainability and the New York City Economic Development Corporation back in 2009. And we've worked in solar in New York City uh, since 2006 on a series of uh, federal grants from the Department of Energy as well as grants from uh, NYSERDA. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the work that we're doing in solar uh, in New York City, uh, particularly as part of a Department of Energy SunShot grant uh, called the Rooftop Solar Challenge 2. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, the SunShot was a goal that the, um, the Department of Energy set back in 2010. Similar to the moonshot, you may remember the moonshot of uh, President Kennedy challenged the country to uh, get to the moon by uh, the end of the decade. And that was achieved uh, actually a little bit ahead of schedule. And so uh, the Department of Energy back in 2010 set the similar goal of making solar energy uh, cost equivalent to uh, fossil fuels and traditional energy by the end of the decade, so by 2020. And nationally, that goal is set at uh, six cents per kilowatt hour. And now we're about halfway through that program, and we're much more than halfway to the goal. So it's very encouraging. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're doing at CUNY uh, and in New York City to help reach that goal. Uh, my title is a, a New York City Solar Ombudsman. You, you may wonder what an, an ombudsman is. I certainly get that question uh, a fair amount. So an ombudsman is similar to a, a, a newspaper ombudsman. Uh, I serve as a liaison. So like with a newspaper ombudsman who serves as a liaison between writers and, and readers of the newspaper, I serve as a liaison between different stakeholders for solar in New York City and New York State, uh, working with the different agencies that help to permit uh, and interconnect solar uh, to our grid, as well as the installers and the industry professionals who actually do the work putting the systems up on roofs, uh, and then also the public as well, uh, the, the people like you who can benefit from solar. Uh, we try to um, play the role of bringing everybody together and helping to solve our problems to uh, bring more, more solar to New York City. So the theme uh, of these talks, I think, is that renewable energy is, is not only possible, but it's happening now. So here are a few pictures. You saw some in Chris's uh, presentation as well of solar in New York City. Uh, these are in Brooklyn. Uh, that's on a multi-family building in Brooklyn. And you can see here uh, a hybrid system. Uh, on the right there is a solar thermal system. And on the left is a solar photovoltaic system. Now, so what does that look like uh, on a large scale? Well, you can see it's, uh, it's pretty exciting. This is the, the graph of solar in New York City, uh, going back to when we first started working on, on developing solar market here in New York City. Uh, back in 2006, we had just about over a megawatt of solar. And today, there's over 47 megawatts. Uh, so that's on 3,200 roofs and counting. Uh, many of those are residential roofs, uh, like the ones that uh, Chris is working on. And, uh, and many are, are also on much larger roofs, uh, like uh, the Sims plant. Um, and so it's very exciting. And uh, what I think is most exciting about this graph is that the curve is only really just starting to uh, reach its steep part. We've seen 70% annual growth uh, on average over this time. But if you look at similar technologies, like uh, you know, the adoption of cell phones, for instance, uh, this curve is going to get a lot steeper uh, a lot more quickly uh, before it ever levels off. So it's, it's an exciting time to be working in solar for me, but it's also an exciting time for everyone in New York City to, to take advantage of this resource. Now, I, I mentioned that the goal of the SunShot is to make uh, solar energy cost equivalent with traditional energy. And so far, a lot of the progress that's been made towards that goal has come from the hardware costs. So the actual panels themselves, uh, inverter costs, um, what remains are, are what we call the soft costs of solar. So these are the costs that 
Chris alluded to, things like the permitting costs or the cost of customer acquisition and financing. Uh, nationally, these account for about 64% uh, of the average total cost of a solar installation. So even if somebody came up to you and offered you uh, solar panels for free, there would still be a pretty significant cost to actually putting them uh, up on your roof. Uh, and that has been the focus area for sustainable CUNY uh, in our work with the Department of Energy as well as other partners uh, in the city and around the state. And you can see some of the progress that's been made. Uh, those blue bars are the average weighted cost uh, of solar in, across New York State and the red, or excuse me, the red is across New York State and the blue is in New York City. And you can see there's been a little bit of a, a delta there between the two. Uh, and, and that has to do with the, the higher regulatory barriers that we have in New York City. There's more complicated building stock. There are more uh, zoning regulations and things like that. And so we're trying to work to streamline those to help bring down that cost and make the cost equivalent uh, here in New York City as to what it is across the state or, e or even lower. So to address these challenges, we've broken in these uh, soft costs into four key areas. Uh, we have permitting and interconnection, planning and zoning, uh, net metering and interconnection standards, and finally financing options. So I'm gonna focus on uh, two of these and tell you a little bit about what we've been working on and then go into detail on some of our other projects that are targeting uh, these costs. Here are uh, the working groups that we formed around these, these key areas. You can see we're working with numerous stakeholders around the state. Um, some of our statewide groups have uh, accomplished uh, such things as a, a streamlined permit for all of New York State that is now being adopted by municipalities and has been adopted by over uh, 110 municipalities across the state. So that's a, a streamlined form that makes the process of uh, applying for a solar permit simple and standard so that installers have a, a standard process, no matter whether they're working on Long Island or whether they're working uh, upstate, say, uh, near Syracuse. In New York City, uh, we're working with numerous partners, including the, the mayor's office, the, the Department of Buildings, Con Edison, uh, and Solar One as well, uh, in these working groups uh, to help bring down the cost here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what these uh, working groups have been working on, as well as the, the goals that we have to keep making progress uh, over the next uh, couple of years. <coughs> So first, on the permitting and interconnection uh, side, one of the challenges in New York City uh, for solar installers is the permitting process. There are many more uh, building codes and regulations here in the city than there are in smaller municipalities upstate because our building stock is often older and more complicated. And so this working group has been developing a framework uh, to streamline that process and to take the, the numerous forms that are currently re required for, for a permit and bring them together into uh, fewer forms, a standard form, combining inspections. Like Chris mentioned, there are sometimes uh, four or five inspections required for a single solar project and so by combining those we can help reduce costs for installers and that ultimately gets passed on uh, to the customer. Additionally, as an educational institution, we focus a lot on transparency. So we've created things like a, a filing checklist for solar installers so that they can make sure that they know uh, what all the forms are that are required and, and make sure that they're filing everything uh, correctly the first time so that they don't have to resubmit forms and, and refile, which can be a costly process. This also helps to make the market more competitive because it makes it easier uh, for installers who don't work in, in New York City and are unfamiliar with the permitting process here uh, to come into the city and add to the market. Um, additionally, uh, my role as an ombudsman, and I have several colleagues, we help to resolve problems that come up uh, with the solar industry, whether a project uh, hits a snag and, and gets stuck in the regulatory process, or if they just have questions, we're here to answer them uh, and to help make the process smooth and to bridge the gap between the agencies who are working with uh, these solar projects and the industry themselves. Uh, but we're not done yet. We still have many other goals to achieve. Um, one of those is to take the, the recommendations we now have for a streamlined permit and to adopt them. So we're going to be working on that in the coming months, which is a, a very exciting process. Um, additionally, we want to create more educational resources, things like example architecture plans. You may not think about that as a, as a customer, but each, uh, each jurisdiction has uh, in sometimes different requirements for the architectural drawings for a solar installation. So by providing that kind of information up front, it helps the solar installers to reduce their costs and then pass that on. 
On the financing side, uh, we're focused very much on, on similar issues that uh, Chris is working on in terms of aggregation. Um, we've also worked in the multifamily space and we worked uh, with Solar One and other partners to develop a guide for co-ops and condos that's now available on the Sustainable CUNY website. It walks you through some of the basics of uh, what incentives are available, what are the challenges to uh, taking advantage of the tax credits that are available for solar, as well as just uh, you know, simple things like how to talk to a, a board about solar. Uh, additionally, uh, we helped uh, work with the mayor's office to get the uh, solar property tax abatement uh, in New York City extended. Uh, this is a, an incentive that was developed back in 2009 to help bridge the gap between the higher cost uh, of solar in New York City and the rest of the metro area. And so basically it's currently worth uh, about 20% of the installed cost of a solar system taken over four years and taken out of your property tax bill. It's a very uh, significant amount which can help uh, reduce the cost for you uh, and homeowners like you in the city. And finally, uh, we're developing a program called Solarize Brooklyn uh, CB6, which I'll talk in, about in a little bit more detail. Um, this program is uh, a, kind of a different flavor of the, of the model that uh, Chris works on with Here Comes Solar. It also brings together customers and helps take advantage of the uh, economies of scale you can get when you work with a community together. Um, the way that we're, we've developed this program, it's uh, similar to models that have been done in other states, uh, such as Massachusetts has a Solarized Mass program, Connecticut has one, uh, and there was also a Solarized Brooklyn campaign uh, two years ago uh, that Solar One helped to develop. And basically what we do is we leverage the, the collective purchasing power of a group of homeowners in an entire neighborhood or a set of neighborhoods uh, in order to reduce the cost of solar. And we work with uh, one or two installers um, to help get that lower discounted price uh, based on the volume that they can get through the program. What we bring to the table is the education and outreach. So as an educational uh, institution, we'll be holding workshops uh, in conjunction with the local community board, reaching out to civic groups, neighborhood associations, and other stakeholders that work uh, right with uh, residents in the community to tell them about solar, educate them, and let them know about the opportunity. Uh, we issued an RFP to solar installers to uh, select two that we have now pre-vetted and selected and we're actually going to be launching the program uh, just next week. And then finally, we offer a simplified process. The solar ombudsmen are here to help uh, homeowners and businesses uh, understand the process and really make it simple for them, walking them through what the requirements are up front so there are no surprises um, when they finally uh, talk to the, to the solar contractor and get their quote. The way that we've structured our, um, our pricing plan is that the more people who participate, the lower the price goes. So we have pricing tiers based on the amount of solar that gets installed through the program. Um, as, the, as the tiers go up and as more solar gets installed, the, the cost goes down for everyone. Now, as Chris mentioned, there are several challenges to working in the, in the Brooklyn market, and these include things like the small amount of roof space on row houses and on brownstones, uh, as well as the uh, regulatory hurdles of working uh, just in, in the city. So we, we've developed a few aspects of our campaign that uh, aim to take aim at these things, including uh, we'll have two installers that we're working with as part of the program so customers have choice, and they uh, were selected as part of that competitive RFP process. Uh, it's also open to both residential and commercial customers. Uh, in some cases, commercial projects can get a higher margin than those small brownstone projects. And by combining them together, uh, we're able to get a better deal uh, for homeowners who, on their own, uh, would be a very low margin prospect for a solar installer. And then finally, um, now is a good time to go solar because there are uh, more financing options available than ever before. Uh, you can get loans where you can get solar and actually own it for zero down. You can start saving immediately uh, on your bill. Um, there are also leases available, um, but those are um, increasingly being displaced by loans in the solar market, especially in New York City, uh, because uh, the zero down option on, on financing loans now available is such an enticing offer. So how did we uh, come to select Community Board 6, which is centered around uh, Park Slope, Red Hook, Carroll Gardens, and Cobble Hill? Um, well, solar is not, uh, it doesn't have the same benefits everywhere you put it on the grid. Uh, so we worked with Con Edison uh, several years back to identify what we call strategic lo locations or solar empowerment zones, where solar provides the most benefit to the electric grid. 
So these are areas with high demand of energy at the times when solar is generating its energy. So that's later in the afternoon uh, when the sun's at its highest point in the sky and those solar panels are really generating a lot of energy. In certain neighborhoods, they have a, a load profile that will match that and they'll be generating the most of their energy uh, actually when solar is generating most of its energy. And so Con Edison and working through NYSERDA now actually offers an, ad an additional incentive uh, to large projects that are located in these strategic zones. And we identified uh, Community Board 6 um, as, a, as a great place to pilot this Solarize effort uh, because of their, their strategic location to the grid, as well as their uh, many community organizations who are helping us to, to perform outreach to the local community. So here you can see a summary of the program. If any of you happen to live down in Brooklyn uh, in Community Board 6, or if you have friends or neighbors who do, uh, please let them know about the program. We're ha having our first uh, workshop on May 12th, uh, or, and that's uh, Tuesday next week. You can also go to our website at uh, solarizebrooklyncb6.org uh, and sign up for the program uh, where enrollment opens on, uh, on the 12th. And the program is going to be four months long, so if you can't make it next week, uh, there'll be ample opportunities to take part in the coming months. Now, uh, Solarize Brooklyn CB6 is just one program. Uh, the city is now helping to uh, expand solar efforts across the city, and this started with the One City Built to Last program uh, that the mayor released uh, last year. And so this uh, plan uh, proposes to uh, basically expand the work of the New York City Solar Partnership, which consists of CUNY, New York City Economic Development Corporation, and the Mayor's Office of Sustainability. And I mentioned that those three came together to help get New York City named uh, one of the first Solar America cities back in 2009. And now the city is actually funding our work to continue those efforts uh, in the coming years. And it's placing a special emphasis on developing uh, community solar programs like the ones that Chris and I have talked about. So more group purchasing efforts, neighborhood group purchasing programs, community shared solar, where if you don't have uh, a rooftop that's suitable for solar, uh, you can actually subscribe into an off-site uh, solar array that's located in your community. That's not currently available, but the Public Service Commission is currently uh, considering the issue and uh, is expected to uh, make community solar a reality uh, very soon. Now, uh, Chris mentioned a little bit about uh, Elon Musk and Tesla's announcement recently about battery storage. And uh, we see battery storage as uh, is going very well with solar. And it presents a unique opportunity in New York City. So I want to tell you a little bit about one of our other programs that looks at um, not just solar, but solar with resiliency. Now, the galvanizing moment uh, for us, as it was for many New Yorkers in terms of looking at the resiliency of our city, was Hurricane Sandy. You, know, you can see up on the graphs there the prolonged outages in each borough. And so after this happened, uh, CUNY was in a, a unique position to, to really feel the impact because we provided uh, the shelter services for about half of the city's uh, evacuees. And after the storm hit, the Department of Energy, who, who we were working with at the time, asked us, well, how did, how did solar fare in the storm? And what, uh, what could solar do to help blunt the impact of these power outages? So we looked at all of the solar uh, installations around the city. And you might recall from the graph that I showed at the, at the start that back in 2012, there was much less uh, solar installed in the city than there is today. But even in affected areas by zip code, uh, we found that there were about five and a half megawatts of solar uh, covering 281 installations that were not only installed there, but survived the storm fine. They didn't fly off the roof or they didn't um, get blown away. They were there, but they weren't able to operate because Basically, solar will continue to generate energy uh, even when the grid goes down and it has to decouple from the grid to protect workers uh, who might be repairing a line uh, for Con Edison. Uh, but there are now new technologies, smart inverters and batteries that can help to island off uh, homes or businesses that have solar uh, with energy storage or even without energy storage to allow them to take advantage of the sun's resource when the grid goes down. Um, so it's a technology problem, but the technology is largely out there currently for this to happen. Uh, what needs to happen now is that the regulations need to be put in place uh, in order to allow these systems to be safely uh, and effectively installed in the city. 
And we want to do this now because, as you saw earlier, uh, solar is continuing to grow in the city. It's growing exponentially. Um, since 2012, uh, now in those same areas in 2015, there are over 15 and a half megawatts covering 1,500 installations. So the more installations we get in the city that aren't resilient, the, the less prepared we will be for the next Sandy that comes along. So we want to tackle this problem quickly. It's, a, it's an urgent matter. So what we did is we brought together all these stakeholders you can see on the left here, and we looked at what are the, you know, what are the options, what, what hurdles need to be uh, overcome in order to install solar uh, with battery storage on the New York City grid. And we just recently won a new, a new Department of Energy grant uh, called Solar Market Pathways to help support this effort. And we formed these working groups around key areas uh, with the goal of creating a roadmap for resilient solar PV uh, over the next year. Uh, the grant is actually a three-year effort, and uh, we're going to be producing a series of uh, fact sheets leading into a roadmap that will uh, help the relevant agencies such as Department of Buildings, the Fire Department, uh, the utilities, to understand what needs to happen in order to permit these systems with energy storage and, and to do so safely. One of the big challenges for this effort is that the pace of technology change is often happening much more quickly uh, than that of the uh, regulatory regime. So there are now new battery technologies, lithium ion, and all sorts of different chemistries um, that you can't currently install in New York because the regulations and the code simply hasn't caught up. So we're going to work with the fire department, we're going to work with the Department of Buildings uh, and other key partners in order to develop um, the rules that will govern these systems and, and to help get them adopted on a much more wide uh, basis across the city. Now, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about solar uh, energy storage, but you may be wondering, um, you know, what can you do on your, on your home? And uh, a couple of years ago, CUNY uh, worked with um, Hunter College as well as other partners to develop what we call the New York City Solar Map. Um, how many of you have, have seen the solar map? I'm just, I'm just curious. Okay, a few hands up there. So this map is publicly available. You can go there right now on your smartphone if you want to um, at uh, www.nycsolarmap.com. And what the map does is it basically allows you to type in your address and find out exactly how much solar you can put on your roof um, and, and how much energy it would offset as well as uh, estimates on cost and financing and things like that. Um, the way that we did that is that we used what's called LIDAR data. So basically they take a plane and they fly it over the city and they bounce lasers off of all of the buildings, all the million uh, rooftops in the city. And by doing that, and with the data that's collected, uh, they're actually able to create a 3D model uh, of the city where you can take into account things like the shadows of, of nearby buildings and the air conditioner units and all the kinds of weird stuff that you find on tops of uh, roofs in the city. Uh, and then we, we apply an algorithm to that that uses basic factors to estimate is solar good there or is it not good? Uh, and so this is just an estimate. I encourage you to go there. It gives you a rough estimate of, of how much solar you can put on your roof, but it's certainly no uh, replacement for an installer actually coming to your home and doing a site assessment. So it's a good starting point, uh, but it shouldn't be an ending point. We, we want you to go take a look at your solar potential uh, and then take the next step. You know, call installers, see, see how much you could save because it could be a lot. When you get to the map after you type in your address, this is the screen you'll see. Um, you'll get a little pop-up that says how much uh, solar you can install. It also gives an estimate of annual bill savings, as well as carbon offsets. And then you, if you click continue, you can get an overview of all of the incentives that are currently available, as well as an estimated payback period. Um, the payback period is based on a cash purchase, but as I mentioned before, uh, there are opportunities now in, in the city as well as across the country to finance systems for zero down. So um, that, that initial cost there can be a little bit daunting, but there are solutions. And so we encourage you to, to talk to contractors and see what's out there and see what could work for you. Uh, there's really never been a better time to buy solar. Not only has the cost gone down, but there are still all of these government incentives available, including a 30% federal tax credit, 25% uh, uh, state tax credit up to $5,000. There's the property tax abatement that I mentioned before. Um, these are all uh, currently available, but they're also changing very quickly. Uh, NYSERDA, the state energy authority, has an incentive that declines as more solar gets installed and as the market matures. So uh, sometimes people say they, they want to wait, wait for technology to get better or wait for incentives to, to get better, but really now, now is a great time and there, there, there's never been a better time. 
Um, so that's a, a New York City solar map. I want to give you, you guys a sneak preview of what we're currently working on, which is a, an expansion of the New York City solar map across the state. Um, this is a, an artist's rendering um, of one of our designers of what this map is going to look like. It's going to expand the map across the state so that folks up in Syracuse or in Westchester uh, can see what their solar potential is as well. Um, one of the things that, that we're trying to integrate into this map is to make it an easy access point for all of the resources that CUNY's created over, over the years, that NYSERDA's created, and that all of these other stakeholders have created to help make solar easy to access. So um, underneath the map, there'll be a series of these widgets that you can use to calculate how much money you could save, could connect you with a local solar or a community solar program, like here comes solar in your area. And just by clicking on your building, you would have all of this information right at your fingertips. One of the other projects we're working on as, uh, as solar becomes more prominent uh, and a more prominent piece of the New York State grid is to work with the utilities to understand how we can avoid some of the problems that uh, Hawaii is facing, for example, right now with high penetrations of solar. Um, so what you can see here is a, is a preview of a, a project that we're working on with Con Ed right now, which will basically allow solar developers to see some of the hurdles and, and the uh, upfront costs that they might have to make uh, in terms of upgrading the grid in order to install large solar projects, larger uh, than 200 kilowatts. Uh, this project is just getting started, but it's been uh, a priority of the, of the state uh, to get this kind of transparency out there in the marketplace. So um, it's an exciting thing, and it's going to move very quickly. And then finally, uh, we want to make information uh, about the solar market available to everyone. Currently, there's a lot of data on the solar market, but uh, a lot of it's kind of on these websites that are hard to find and, and hard to access. So the goal of the New York State solar map is to be a one-stop shop portal for solar in the state. And we're going to have different layers, like you can see here, where you can see how much solar insulation uh, you get in each different part of the state. You know, as, uh, as Chris mentioned earlier, New York State gets a lot more solar energy uh, than, than Germany. Uh, and so it's a, you know, it's a great place and a great opportunity. Um, I mentioned the unified solar permit that CUNY worked on uh, with NYSERDA. You'll be able to see all the jurisdictions in the state that have adopted that permit and that have streamlined their solar process. So we're, we're really excited about this. It's going to be launching in September of this year, although we're hosting our ninth annual New York Solar Summit uh, on June 10th this year, and we're going to have a little preview there uh, for everyone to see. So that's, uh, that's my presentation. Thank you so much for having me, and I'm looking forward to uh, the discussion afterwards.